from Lagos, the nation's commercial capital. This is the News at 10. Live from Channels Television. Reporting tonight, Imba Umar. Hello and welcome. Christian community in Yobe State holds peaceful procession to call government's attention to security situation across the country and Leah's continuous stay in captivity two years after her kidnap. Senate moves to establish commission against proliferation of small arms and light weapons in the wake of rising insecurity across the country. Alsted Bayelta State Governor-elect David Leon breaks silence, dissociates himself from violence attacks, trailing Supreme Court's verdicts which nullified his election. And Britain moves to end what it calls cheap labor from Europe, pronounces priority access for high-skilled workers from around the world. That's the fallout of Brexit. Plus, business, sports, and news from Abuja, the FCT, and later, international news from our London studios. On business news tonight, Federation Accounts Allocation Committee shares more than 647 billion naira to the three tiers of government as revenue disbursements for January. And on sports news tonight, Nigeria Football Federation denies reports that former Super Eagles forward and coach Daniel Amokachi has been appointed as head of its technical department. University of Lagos fresh graduate who reportedly jumped into the lagoon asked for more investigation as they dismissed social media story of suicide. It's the second anniversary of the abduction of the Dubchi schoolgirls and Christians in Yobe State use the occasion of the day to raise their voices against incessant killings and insecurity across the country. They voiced their concerns during a peaceful procession in Damaturu, the state capital, to commemorate Lee Isharibu's two years in Boko Haram's captivity. They also want the federal government to consider the security of the nation as topmost priority. <laughs> A mother in tears and a father whose hope may be in short supply. It's now two years since their daughter Leah Sharibu was abducted by Boko Haram after 110 girls were captured from Government Girls Science Technical College, Dapchi, in Yobe State. According to one of the 104 girls who were later freed, Five of them died in captivity, but Leah's refusal to denounce her faith made her abductors to hold her captive. <laughs> Bothered by the situation and the general security challenge in the country, the Christian Association of Nigeria and Yobe State are embarking on a peaceful procession to commemorate Leah Sharibu's two years in captivity and other victims in Damaturu, the state capital. We commiserate and also extend our greetings and also feel with the parents in particular about this uh, sad event that up to now is still in dark. She might not have the grace to check the calendar and do other things. And we are also doing this on behalf uh, of all others that are still in captivity like Dr. Beatrice Zaka and others, even including Muslims, they are all in captives. So we are doing this to remind the government to put them at heart so that these people will be released. Mr. Nathan Sharibo, Leah's father, is also appealing to President Buhari to make good his promise to secure his daughter's release. Mr. Buhari, who is the Nigerian president, is a father and is a grandfather. His administration has assured us, the family, that his administration would, should do their post, possible best to see that my daughter has been released. Also promised the nation, that is Nigeria, and almost 
promised the whole world that his administration should do his possible best to see that all those that are in captivity they should be released just like that call by Leah in 2018 can and Nigerians are looking up to the government to act promptly and end this sad commentary on the nation's security. And we will have more on the two-year uh, anniversary of the Dubchi School abduction. And we'll be joined later on on the News at 10 by Buki Shonibari. She's a child rights advocate. Oh, barely 24 that will be barely 48 hours after Latia Degan, an assistant director of the state house, was killed. Police authorities in Abuja say that they have arrested a suspect in connection with the murder. A preliminary investigation by the Police Criminal Investigation Department reveals that the suspect allegedly conspired with some others who were still on the run who perpetrated the crime. Mrs. Degan was murdered in her apartment on Monday, February the 17th, around 11 p.m. The police is, however, warning members of the public to disregard inaccurate information in the social media space and not to preempt the ongoing police investigation. Meanwhile, the police in Nasara State say that they have also arrested 12 suspects in connection with the recent abduction of the Nasara State Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Works, Mr. Jibrin Giza. The state police... Uh, Commissioner Bola Longe says that his officers are on the trail of other suspects just as he assures residents that their readiness to rid the state of crime is paramount. Meanwhile, the state government is calling on residents to be cautious as it works towards improving security. We put sustained pressure on the kidnappers. We arrested, firstly, five people in a given area between Nazarawa Egon area and Swabu area. Then the Ethnica Intelligence pointed that where they were were at the back of the Federal University and towards PHN, you know, service center. We dispersed our men to the place. Even in the night they were there. They arrested seven other Suspect, And when the kidnappers knew that there was no any escape route, uh, they abandoned him around Dudu Guru area and they disappeared. But we are still on their heels. We are monitoring them uh, through technical intelligence and through human intelligence. And by the grace of God, we will get to them. From security matters to politics now, the ousted governor-elect of Bielsa State, Mr. David Leon, has broken his silence since the Supreme Court nullified his, education, his election as governor of the state and subsequently ordered the inauguration of Mr. Doegiri as the substantive governor. Mr. Leon's first reaction is coming at a time he is being accused of plotting the recent outbreak of violence in the state after the Supreme Court verdict explains that rather than instigating violence, he has been preoccupied with exploring all legal processes in the matter and that his thoughts and actions have never wavered from the fact that the court is the last hope of the common man. He assures the people of Bielsa State that as a peace lover, he would never support or direct anyone to engage in violence. He however called on all political leaders and their supporters in the state to be calm and abide by the laws of the land. Let's now get back to our lead story on two years after the abduction of Lee Sharabu. And we are now being joined by Ms. Buki Shunibare, the founder of Girls Child Africa and a member of the Bring Back Our Girls group. I want to thank you so much indeed for joining us on the News at 10. It's been two years now. Uh, that's the silence we've heard about uh, Leah Sharibu's abduction. And in spite of calls for various groups, she's yet to be released. How does this make you feel? I think I feel disappointed as a Nigerian. And not just me as an individual, but I speak for many Nigerians. Many Nigerians who, two years ago, after the abduction of Leah Sharibu, alongside 109 other Dabchi girls, were hoping 
that the lessons um, from the Chibo girls' abduction, who have now been in abduction for 2,137 um, 2, days, that those lessons will be um, put into um, concrete actions and those actions will translate into preventive measures such that the kind of abduction that led to the Dapchi girls' abduction would not happen. So I feel quite disappointed, um, especially also because it was four years gap between the abduction of the Chibo girls, um, who 112 still remain in abduction, and the abduction of Leah Sharibo and others. Um, it means that we are not learning um, from our mistake. And most importantly, I feel sad, I feel pained. Um, I, I listen to the parents of Leah Sharibo and how much they, 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 they want their daughter to come back. The father of the nation mm -hmm. has promised that she is going to be brought back many times, but she's yet um, to be brought back. So I feel quite sad, sad and I feel quite disappointed. Now, uh, apart from the procession by the uh, Christian Association of Nigeria in Yobe State, there's no other program by any other group. Is this due to fatigue, if you will? No, I, it's not due to fatigue. Um, the advocacy for Leah Sharibu's return, as well as um, the Chibo girls and several other Nigerians that are in abduction, is not necessarily being done by processions on the street. Um, there are engagements going on, there are conversations going on, um, there are um, technical, or let me say back-end um, discussions going on as to what is the best way to continue to keep this on the front burner? So while the Christian Association of Nigeria um, is doing their bit, every other individual um, and group at different times keep calling for, for the release. What we see on a day like this by Christian Association of Nigeria is to latch on the milestone day um, to keep calling. And that they do that does not um, in any way mean that other groups or other individuals are not still calling for release. So uh, as it stands now, uh, some of the comments that we saw in Yobe State today during that procession uh, was that uh, the people asking the federal government to seek foreign intervention in addressing the country's security challenge. Do you share that sentiment? Um, I share that sentiment in part. And, I, and, and the other part is the fact that um, the Nigerian government does not only have the constitutional mandate um, to protect citizens and ensure their security and welfare, but also they have the capabilities and the capacity to do so. Um, not just the capacity of the fact that we have, you know, many experts in this field, but also the capability that comes from, you know, taxpayers' money, you know, and, and several other intelligence that we know of. I think um, something is not being done right. I think we are not unnessing properly. Um, the um, president came out a few, few weeks ago to talk about the fact that, oh, there were um, negotiations and they were supposed to pay ransom, but at the tail end. It means that we are still not getting something right. Two years on for Leah and um, almost six years for the Chibok girls. So while foreign intervention would be necessary, let's not also forget that in international relations, there is the principle of non-interference. And if if non-interference is what will not allow foreign, foreigners to come and do what the, the government is supposed to do, then I think it is important for the government to get its act together, look within its resources and capacity, and make sure that what needs to be done um, is done as soon as possible. Now, just uh, uh, yesterday we heard where the president made uh, a statement. He Actually, let me just quote what the president said. He promised to ensure the release of all those that are in captivity. And that, of course, includes uh, Lee Sharibu, as you well know, and uh, the remaining Chibok schoolgirls. But would you say the president is matching his words with action? No, I, I, those promises um, are not new to me, and they are not new to Nigerians. We, I, it's not even new to um, parents of Leah Sharibu, and even to parents of the Chibo girls and several other Nigerians in abduction. I think that what is important for the president to take note of is that we are tired of promises, we are tired of just words, we want action, and we want such kind of action that would produce results. And what result do we expect? We expect results like seeing Leah Sharibu be 
being got back, seeing all the other Chibo girls being got back, ending the spate of insurgency and, and so on. So what's on one hand, if we don't see results, any action going on back end does not really uh, make meaning to us as citizens until those words and action amount to the results that we all want to see. Buki Shonibare, many thanks indeed for talking to us, a child rights uh, advocate, also the founder of Girl Child Africa and a member of the Bring Back Our Girls group. Many thanks indeed for talking to us on the news at 10. In part two, after the break, Lagos State Government confirms first case of Lassa fever, quarantines victims and monitoring over 60 other suspected cases to have been contacted with the victims. Stay with us.